In the wake of the recent maritime incident here that released 400 tons of oil into the sea, some ship captains suggested measures that port authorities and ship crews can take to mitigate the impact of such incidents. The Straits Times spoke to two current ship captains and a former captain who have 10 to 30 years of sailing experience on possible improvements to existing practices. Captain A. 61, who has close to 30 years of experience, said a preemptive measure to contain oil spills would be placing containment booms around ships at anchorages, designated areas in harbors or ports where ships can drop anchor while waiting to berth. He requested anonymity due to company policy restricting crew members from speaking to the media. His suggestion takes a cue from some ports in the US and Netherlands, which place these floating devices at anchorages to act as a barrier to trap oil within a certain area in the event of a spill. ST has reached out to the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore MPA for comment on its existing protocols as well as potential adjustments to its measures. Port Operator PSA Singapore redirected queries about the rollout of preemptive containment booms to MPA. Mandated by international maritime safety standards, ship crews need to participate in regular drills to practice responding to various emergencies, said Captain Sawan Osman. A senior lecturer at Singapore Polytechnic's Singapore Maritime Academy. He noted that steering gear failure drills are conducted at least once every one to three months, while monthly engine failure drills are tabletop discussions involving all members on board. Captain Sowen, who sailed for 10 years and has been teaching for 19 years, proposed that ship crews conduct drills more regularly than regulations require. As a young ship cadet, his then captain conducted emergency evacuation drills every Saturday instead of at the mandated frequency of once a month, which helped to familiarize him with the steps, the 61 year old said. The three captains said navigating Singapore's waters comes with its own set of challenges as its waterways are surrounded by outlying islands and neighboring countries. Furthermore, Singapore's port has high vessel traffic, on top of having anchorages located close to one another. Captain Sowen said the Sinki Fairway, that ships coming from the Strait of Malacca have to sail through to get to Pasa Panjang Terminal, is narrow and busy. And vessels need to carefully maneuver around islands such as St. John's and Lazarus. Captain B, 40, who has 12 years of maritime experience, said the high congestion makes navigating Singapore's waters a challenge without a harbour pilot providing clear instructions to the ship's captain. A harbour pilot is a local ship handling specialist who goes on board a foreign flag vessel to guide it safely in and out of ports. The Netherlands flag Vox Maxima was under pilotage when it suffered a sudden loss of engine and steering control at Pasa Panjang Terminal on June 14. It hit the stationary Singapore-flagged bunker vessel Marine Honor, rupturing one of its oil tanks, leading to the oil spill that is still being cleaned up. Captain Lee said such a disabled vessel in port can lead to disastrous consequences. Risks include colliding into other vessels and hitting wharves or harbour structures, added Captain Sowen, while a vessel that has lost engine control could run into shallow waters, leading to a loss of propulsion. As the entrances to Singapore's waters are quite narrow and busy, a vessel breakdown may also block shipping traffic and affect port operations. He said, Ports in bigger countries such as Japan and China, have larger waterfronts, and a vessel breakdown has less significant repercussions than one in Singapore. Captain B. noted that ships must meet safety, environmental and operational standards in foreign ports, so they must carry out effective maintenance of their engines and steering controls. But this is not always foolproof. He added, 
As a new ship may also run into such issues, given the complexity of equipment on board. Still, a sudden loss in engine and steering control of a vessel is rare, said all three captains, who said they have experienced this only one to three times in their career. Over his 10 years of sailing, Captain Sowen experienced an engine failure near a port only once. As he was on a dual-engine ferry, he could continue maneuvering the vessel using the other engine. On the other two occasions, he was out at sea and there were no other vessels nearby. This meant that the vessel could drift freely while the engineers fixed the system. Every vessel has its own safety management system or standard operating procedures for emergency situations. Captain Yi said that if his ship or vessel loses engine and steering control, the crew has been trained to drop anchors instantly and to inform the port of the situation. At the same time, the ship would begin emergency steering, which involves the crew going down into the steering flat or a steering gear room to navigate the vessel from its internal mechanisms, he added. Captain Sowen said the crew would need to make an announcement on the ship's very high-frequency radio system to warn other ships about the emergency and to indicate that it is not under command. Captain A said that, depending on the vessel, it could take around five minutes to complete the steps stipulated in the standard operating procedures if the vessel was initially moving at a safe speed of 4 to 8 knots.